So Dr. Wilson, as you're, as you're thinking about talking to the teachers and administrators, and when you're talking to your peers at other um, the surrounding communities, what are some of the actionable items that you're recommending? What are a few of the top tips you're like, well, we're trying these things and we're excited to, about what's going on out there. And these are, these are some of the, the ideas that we're about to implement. So, so in preparation for learning at home or learning remotely, or maybe even an opportunity where you're at school some and you're at home some, it's important that there be some systems in place, um, a communication channel uh, back and forth between the, the teacher and the parent. Um, I think first, the first thing is to make sure that we know when each other is available to help and ask questions, um, where there's a place to, 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 um, to get assistance um, and, and to really access the professional right and to have the teacher be there to help the parent as they're helping with helping their students the second thing is um, really make sure there's a structured workspace for your student um, get them in a location that this is where we where school is that we learn and these are our the academic pieces of what we're doing that might mean that if it's really literacy or numeracy or science or or social studies that those things are happening um, in a remote environment and that's really a structured uh, workspace and then, and then the other part where you can you can help and assist is have a different place whenever they may be learning in their own with their Lego um, Lego Lego stations or puzzles or a place where they can actually learn in an area that's not necessarily as structured. Um, frankly, you know, how is that an eight year old going to sit in front of a computer and do remote instruction for four hours a day? That's not healthy. That's not healthy for grown ups, and it's not healthy for students. So small bits of instruction um, in the classroom, our teachers are, you know, eight to 15 minute bits of instruction that allow kids to do things. Um, that's hard for a parent to be able to juggle and manage it. It's not like you have it on a bell timer, but it's being, you know, being perceptive of what your student's actually doing and how your, how your kid is, is, is working. Um, when you find something that they like doing, ask your teacher if they can do more of that. Um, don't necessarily think it has to be do this, do this, do this. There are a variety of ways that kids learn. One of the benefits of at-home learning is that you can get all the way individualized to the individual student. You don't have 19 or 20 other students in the classroom that the teacher is trying to make sure they get activities that, that is for the group and it may or may not resonate with each individual student. Your teachers will know four or five or six different ways for a concept to be presented. Um, in a way that your student will learn best. So when you find something that works, communicate that with your teacher. Let them know, hey, this really works for us. When we when we go to this website and do these things, this really is a good thing for us. Can we do that more? Absolutely. That's what this is best.